Um, I was asked to give a talk at the uh, Napa Valley Writers Association on how I write my columns, and I decided to rather than tell to show, show don't tell. So I uh, I created one in about ten minutes, and I was uh, I thought aloud as I was writing it to try to give a window into the way in which I I think, and somebody. Uh, uh, heard that I did that but was unable to attend and asked if I might uh, uh, take my next column and do that. Uh, next column I'm going to be writing for AOL is something called What Works in uh, Social Media and uh, I'll try to do that for you and turn this camera around so you're not looking at my face which is certainly not much to look at um, but show you as I'm typing what I'm doing and changing and try to think out loud. Okay. Uh, by the way, before I do that, I should mention, you know, uh, a couple of general principles that, that really undergird the way I write. I, write. I am a how-to writer, primarily, uh, and um, I'm obsessed with a few, there's a few, few guiding principles that undergird my work. One is that, uh, unlike James Joyce, who was interested in writing what was going to please him, scream a conscious, whether it was understood, or his audience understood him or not, uh, I'm obsessed with uh, my audience and wanting to make sure that everything I write is crystal clear uh, and also uh, not obvious and practicable. Uh, there's so much stuff on the internet that if it's something that is, uh, uh, you know, standard, it's not adding any value. So I'm looking for the not obvious and actionable, something that will actually be helpful. And I try to. Uh, uh, I really respect the reader's time. Everybody's very busy, and so um, one of my other guiding principles is I try to uh, provide the most of those non-obvious ideas in the shortest amount of space without it being so concise that it's boring. I try to make it at least a little entertaining, not with so much with stories, but with uh, uh, just use of, of uh, the, the right word that, uh, that adds a little bit of... Uh, if either humor or lightness or interest or something. So those are kind of the guiding principles. Uh, and uh, a title like What Works in Social Media is very emblematic of the kind of work I like to do. Um, what Works defines very much what I like to focus on. And in social media, of course, not only is it hot, but we're starting to say, get a sense that social media may be being overhyped, especially in the job market. So uh, trying to write something that's on a fresh topic is, is also key. So okay, uh, so I'm going to turn this thing around now and I'm going to right now let's, let's, let's get this on the screen. Okay. All right. All right. Now you can see this is not Microsoft Word, but I'm going to just go right in now to Microsoft Word and open a new file. And there and there we go. And I hope this will work. Let's see. Anyway, uh, okay, so I'm going to again, try to think aloud. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm thinking about my uh, my audience and what do they need to hear. Okay, so I'll just I'll go with that kind of a lead. Uh, so, all right, you um, make sure this is working here so this will go. Okay. Uh, and I should write in a large font here so that you can see it well. Let me change this from my usual relatively small font to something big. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying a bunch of different words, but I'm trying to, let's see. Uh, Okay, so just what was going through my head in that sense. I tried a couple of words, but in the very beginning, you know, as it changed a bit, it was just, it didn't feel like there was a, it was going to be a flow. Um, but notice I didn't say stuck, I wrote something. And one of the other basic rules is there's nothing innovative, but I definitely, as soon as something even marginally good comes to my head, I write it. 
because it's far easier to revise your way to excellence than to come up with it out of thin air. I, uh, uh, I do revise a lot of times, as you can see, uh, even in a short period of time. Okay, so I also tend to read aloud, see how it's reading. Um, job seekers are using social media more than ever, but they're also hearing it may not, uh, that word that is not necessary, hearing it, it may not be as effective uh, again, I have to say, in effect, landing a job, because that's redundant with uh, job seekers, as has been hyped. Uh, and I also, I like to keep my introductions very short. People want to get to the meat. They don't want long introductions. Uh, that's part of the respecting my reader. So, okay, uh, now I'm going to read it again out loud and try to see if I, what I can do, you know, get right into the into the meat. Job seekers using social media more than ever, but they're also hearing it may not be as effective as have been hyped. All right, what works? And then again, I just thought, oh, I left out the title, so now I'm going to go uh, right in here. Just well, I remember it. nothing that slows me down. I always keep moving. That keeps me from uh, it keeps the, the process very pleasurable. Uh, so, what works in social media? Not good because I'm talking about jobs. So, uh, uh, social media. And then uh, what works is subtitle. What works in landing a job? Uh, um, uh, I like the idea of adding what actually works. Normally, I don't use that. That's considered an extra word, an unnecessary word. But by adding it here, it implies in the subtitle already that uh, uh, that there is. Uh, wide perception that, that it, it doesn't, that nothing, you know, really works well. So uh, I thought that might might cue the reader into seeing that actually this is going to uh, actually, def you know, go beyond the standard stuff that's, pro that's provided. By the way, I also picked this topic because it's something I really is an area of weakness. Uh, it's not an area of my strength. And so often I write about things that I'm not expert at, but I have some expertise in, because I'll learn a lot about it. I have great respect for, uh, for the power of Google to provide incredible amount of information. Uh, it's hubristic of a writer these days to, uh, to think that he or she has got a, a monopoly on, on all wisdom. Uh, his role is at its best, in my judgment, often to, yes, uh, is, is to synthesize what's the best of what's out there, write it well, and then, yes, add your own ideas. And, of course, your own filtration is, when you look through the Internet, there's so much, but filtering what you really sense is, is going to work, or is, in my case, as a career counselor, is uh, uh, concordant with what has worked for my clients. So that curation function of searching through the internet to curate what's really the best, not obvious, and potent uh, techniques, and then yes, adding my own and uh, curating, and then writing them in a in a concise uh, and yet somewhat enjoyable to read style, uh, to me is the uh, the value add that a, that a how-to writer uh, brings. Okay, so back to the article. Job seekers using social media more than ever, but they're also hearing it may not be as effective as in hype. What? And I'll go back now. I'm going to add actually because I want. I like the idea of consistently uh, with the title, but I'm not sure. I may take it out later, but I'm not going to, you know, get stuck with it now. Later, when I reread it with fresh eyes, it'll either I'll get a sense that it either yeah it belongs. I'll keep the actually in, or I'll get rid of it. Okay. So um, now. Uh, I get right to the meat, and here is where I would be uh, uh, using, and I will, I will be when I actually write the column. Uh, we'll be searching on the internet, but that's not a good use of your time to have you uh, watch me Google that. But what I would maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll do a little of it. So uh, uh, first, by the way, what I like to do is before I look at the internet, I don't want to get tunnel vision, so I will think about uh, you know what. Is one not obvious but potent technique for using social media uh, that works. By the way, I just realized that, that I wanna, I'm making an assumption that everybody knows what I mean by social media. So uh, 
I'm going to uh, make that clearer by in that first paragraph replacing the word social media by uh, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, because I've got it in the title. Uh, social media, what actually works, job seekers are using LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter more than ever. Uh, or not even say more than ever, because now that I'm tense. Are, are, today, is, okay, it's, I want to I want to make it clear that it's part of uh, the current zeitgeist. Today's job seekers uh, feel obligated, almost feel obligated, to use, lest they be seen, as atavistic. That may be too big a word, so I may change it later. Uh, it may not even be quite right word anyway. Uh, may, be, may be seen as, oh, Luddites. Right, that's the right word. But they're also hearing it may not be effective. It's been high. Now, I'm, for now, I'm feeling much better about that first sentence. It feels like that captures the the, the, the truth of the situation and uh, is more precise. I like it. Today's job seekers almost feel obligated to use LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, lest they be seen as Luddites. Um, but they're also uh, hearing, well, that has maybe just one sense. I don't know. They're, do I really want to use hearing? Uh, they're also, uh, yeah, I'll stay with it for now. It may not be perfect. You know, they're also hearing it may not be as effective as been hyped what actually works. And now I'll bring back the word social media uh, in using social media to land a job. Okay. So as I said, before I go to the internet and I start Googling, I'm going to uh, uh, think about what the hell do I know from working with my clients that works or sense is likely to work. Um, so I'm going to start with LinkedIn. The first thing that just pops into my head uh, is the picture. It's uh, you know it's so I'm going to I'm going to write something about the the picture. And I, I tend to use bullets. People like bullets, or I, uh, or even better, uh, I like to use uh, little short boldface phrases because they uh, if they're obvious you don't. It's very dangerous to use obvious little bullet phrases to, to demarcate ideas because the reader just looks at the uh, the bold face so he's oh yeah that sounds familiar yeah that sounds same old same old I'm gonna go on so I try to use um, the bulleted phrases that are not obvious but intriguing uh, but yet not so not obvious that they're arcane so okay uh, so the first one is okay so the first so there's a good example of where I try to use a little bit of humor without it taking up a lot of, of the reader's time. And again, this is now a, a, a header that is uh, uh, somewhat explanatory, but not too explanatory that it makes the reader think, oh yeah, yeah. So that's a good example. So your mugshot. Uh, and now right, I'll just start writing. get rid of the bold facing while I think of it because we, obviously that's just for the header. Again, if I can make it a fix instantly, I do it. But if it's uh, uh, something that takes time, I usually come back later. You'll see I may, sometimes I may put it in red or something or write the word Marty note or something so that I make sure I don't forget about it later. The last we judge people too much on looks But such is the world. Now, see again. Note that that's the kind of language I try to use. It's it's in it's 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 informal. It's more human, uh, and doesn't. But it's not like these long stories that distract the reader from the meat or some long jokes or whatever. I'm not trying too hard. I try to just just have a little bit of I don't know. I'm just gonna, I can't write nothing of a better word than spice to describe it. I'll ask we judge people too much on looks, but such is the world. Um, your LinkedIn, Facebook, 
and Twitter photos may like, do as much to a bet. I like that word because it's short, um, but gets the point across. Your employability as uh, as your substance. I like that substance because it was a nice brief way of saying, you know, your skills, your abilities, or your personality, your you know, your record, your resume. Substance, a nice tight way to do that. Again, I'm always. I'm thinking like a distiller. I try to think about how can I say it in the fewest words uh, without any great loss. I mean, if you try to get everything exactly precisely right, everything it tends to be long because you need to qualify so many of your statements or whatever. I'm trying to always strike the balance between precise enough that I'm, you know, precise enough, but not uh, not so precise that it's requiring this long, turgid uh, writing style, like the preponderance of the evidence suggests that we might uh, obtain, you know, uh, better results if we blah. That's just so turgid that nobody's going to read it. I, I do constantly focus on, uh, you know, will my readers read this? And uh, I'm not doing anybody any good if, uh, if they don't read it. Now, I don't pander by, you know, I'm not writing silly stuff I don't write about uh, uh, horoscopes or uh, I could easily appeal to people if I just taught, wrote about psychics so group sex and you know the like so and I write very substantively but I do try to make sure that it's sugar-coated enough that people read it okay alas we judge people too much on looks but such is the world uh, your LinkedIn Facebook and Twitter photos may do uh, 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 I'll just say, like mugshot again. Uh, photos, I don't care. The photos, photos, not photos. I don't want to play. You need to have more than one. Photo may do as much to abet your employability as uh, as does your substance. Grammatically correct there. Okay. Uh, the key, I also like the, that word key. It's a good word. Again, it's brief and it also gets to the point. The key, a head and shoulders shot. that shows you engaged, natural, not forced. Alas, uh, I'm going to use the last before, so I want to say it again. <clears throat> In smile-oriented America, uh, we react much better to to a, and at least uh, much better I want to say in upbeat this is not quite right we have much better to a smiling face than to a serious one that gives me a chance to throw in some non-obvious things, too. I happen to know that, you know, Europeans in general, they think we're Americans are kind of silly, that we're always, you know, we're putting phony smiles and phony optimism on things. And so it's a little way of my to reveal some little something about what I know uh, that makes it a little more interesting and uh, doesn't, doesn't, hurt, doesn't hurt the process at all. So now I've got my first bullet. Alas, we judge people too much on looks, but such is the world. Uh, your LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter photo may do as much to abet your employability as does your substance. The key, a head and shoulder shot that shows you engaged, natural, not forced. In upbeat-oriented America, we much, react much better to a smiling face than to a serious one. Okay, great. And that's all I need for that first bullet. Now, I would go to the Internet. And let me just do one with you here. So, uh, of course, the key is how to search, uh, how to... Uh, what search terms to use. So I'm just going to put the word social media in quotes so that the Google knows that I'm looking for it, not as the word social is a separate word and media is a separate word, but the word social media <coughs> and uh, 
I'm going to put the word job, finding a job or something like that, because that's what the public tends to use. Or Because if I use job hunting, it's possible, but I think finding a job, and I'm not going to put those in quotes, uh, or, and I notice some of the, I'm watching, I'm looking at the Google suggest a, uh, a completion term that I'm seeing, find a job. Okay, so I'm betting that that's Google's algorithm telling me that that's very common. So I've got social media in quotes, and then I'm not going to put find a job in quotes because the word job and find may be in a different order in that sentence. So I'm just putting social media find a job. Okay, and lo and behold, uh, there we go. And I really trust the, you know, the not trust, but a great respect for the, the algorithm that the Google uses. That which comes up uh, first is often, uh, or in the, certainly in the top two or three, often end up most useful to the most people because it's got the most backlinks, etc. So as it happens indeed, the first, uh, this is incredible, I love it. There are three, uh, oh my God, there's just tons of links. The first links are, how do you social media in your job search from about.com. The next one is, how do you social media find a job in Forbes. Next one is, how to find a graduate job that's not so on target using social media. Uh, uh, the one in Huffington Post, there's tons of them. So, okay, and Wall Street Journal one. Uh, you uh, one by U.S. News where I where I write where this column may go, so I certainly want to look at that. So what I would do now is I would probably go through those first eight and not read them, but scan the the, the headers, etc., and try to find something that was not obvious, that really is not just you know where there is where it either there's good data that it works or that my my sense as a career counselor, having thought about my clients and what what, what would work in the real world. Uh, is likely to work. So I'm only going to look at one. I'm going to look at the first, you know, the first Google search result because they said the algorithms that Google uses really are remarkably predictive. So I certainly want to respect it. I'm not going to necessarily just, you know, focus on the first one, but I want to certainly look at it in this case, especially since A, about.com is, a, or at least it was a New York Times company, it's a respectable place. And uh, uh, so, okay, so now I'm looking at this article. And I'm seeing, what does it say here? Okay, I'm going, I'm not looking at the, the introductory material. I'm going right to its bullets, its major points. So first point is really stupid and obvious. It says LinkedIn. If you're not already on LinkedIn, you definitely need to be. So that's the kind of thing that I would reject immediately as too obvious, not, not useful. Uh, I want non-obvious yet potent. So I go through past that. Okay, here is a way to use LinkedIn to search. Okay, company search. One of the best ways to use it if you have a very specific company, and notice I read aloud. When you read out little things, it really helps me to understand it quickly. And, uh, uh, and of course, I'm reading my own stuff. It helps me identify errors and seeing if there's a better way to, uh, to word something. Okay. Um, so one of the best ways to lose LinkedIn is if you have a very specific company you're interested in. You search on that company and hopefully find people connected to other people you know. Then you can ask your personal contact to contact you. Uh, to connect you, I see. It allows employers to post jobs on the site. Jobs use that quality. Okay, so uh, if you have a specific company, search on their company, hopefully find people connected to other people you know. Okay, so that's not bad. I may or may not use it, but it doesn't hurt for me to, to, to take a bullet. And so... Uh, I'm going to put it in my words, though, that may be a little punchier, a little better, a little clearer, a little something. So first I'm trying to think of what my header is going to be called. Uh, uh, I'll call it LinkedIn Connect to your dream employer. That's intriguing, not quite clear what it says, so it makes the person want to read it. Um, LinkedIn, that's a high pound, it's a compact, it should be probably a hyphenated sum. And so I go there and I've got that. And then I write something like, uh, yeah, I like specificity, that helps. So uh, unlike in the about.com, I'll say, Let's say you want to work for Google, okay? 
because I, I was saying, okay, what is the most popular company to work for in America these days? It's pretty much Google or Apple. Let's actually use Apple. Um, if you want to work for Apple, somehow it's just my intuition says more, more people do. Again, I'm getting rid of the bold face here. It's only for the heading. Now, let's say you want to work for Apple. Uh, search LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn's company directory to see if any of your LinkedIn connections work there. Uh, write a quick in mail. That's, uh, and I will explain for people who may, won't know what it is, LinkedIn's uh, internal email system uh, describing what sort of job you're looking for and why you're worthy of a introduction. So I want to, and I need to do that first. Write a quick in email asking for an introduction to someone who might help you land a job. Describe the sort of job the sort of job you're looking for and why you're worthy of an introduction. Okay, again, not perfect, but good enough for this first draft. So for purposes of this video that I'm making, I would go, you know, more, my columns, you know, columns normally are supposed to be between 500 and 800 words, 900 words, uh, sometimes have a narrower range, sometimes longer, but that's typically, you know, somewhere in there. So I would go on and I'd probably go through the, uh, both my own ideas and, uh, the, those that I got off of Google till I got a bunch of them. Then I would prune the ones that were uh, weakest, uh, leaving me with you know 500 to 900 words of the best stuff. And then I would um, end with a conclusion. I always like a brief conclusion that either moves the person to action or otherwise makes the person feel the thing is complete, kind of puts a capstone on it. So I'm going to end this video by trying to come up with some kind of an ending for that. Uh, okay, so the first thing that pops into my head is uh, uh, is, is the point that you know in-person and human connections are often much more potent than anything you can do online. So, uh, and there's a phrase I've used before that I like, which is coffee, not cloud. So I'm going to try to integrate that into this conclusion. Uh, so, something like... Uh, All these uh, tips may imply that your job search should heavily reside uh, uh, reside heavily in the cloud. In fact, coffee. may be wiser. That is, the sort of deep connection required to get someone to go the extra mile on your behalf to help you land a job. This is all terrible, but I'll revise it. Um, is more likely to do so in an in person as the result of an in person meeting than a clever social media 
uh, pitch. Okay, so I'm going to read that again. It's uh, and see where I can make it better. All these tips may imply that your JavaScript is out heavily in the cloud. In fact, uh, spending it in a coffee shop may be wiser. Spending it in a coffee shop. Uh, in fact, not spending it because that implies you're sitting in Starbucks. In fact, uh, chats over coffee may be more effective. Again, I always like to, I do like to qualify a bit because with human being, nothing is always the case. You know, maybe is a better word than will be. In fact, chats over coffee may be more effective. And then I can get rid of that is. want to make sure. Is this picking up here on the screen? I hope so. It's scaring me there. Yeah, I got yeah, I gotta lower it a bit. Okay, yeah. Just a bit here. So you can see it. Alright, good. Uh, all these tips may imply that your job switch you provide heavily in the cloud. In fact, chats over coffee may be more effective. The sort of deep connection required to get someone to go the extra mile for you instead of on your behalf. To, no, not to you, extra mile to help you land a job. Ah, I can get rid of all that. It'd be more effective than a than You know, uh, LinkedIn. In fact, chats over coffee. In fact, all these tips may imply your job should be in the cloud. In fact, it chats over coffee may be more likely to create the connection deep enough to make the person want to go the extra mile in helping you at the job. That's much better. But the cloud coffee combo may be the one to punch. It's too pugilistic for me, but for now I'm going to write it down. Uh, you need. So that's, uh, I would go back and revise all that as it says, as I've described. But that gives you at least a little window into the way in which I create a column. And as you can see, um, I end up taking probably about maybe two hours to write the first draft. Uh, like I said, all I will have done at this point was probably spend a few more minutes thinking about the kind of strategies, social media strategies that I've seen work with my clients, then go look through a bunch of articles in uh, Google search, curate them, uh, write, distill them, and write them in a way that's a little more entertaining, uh, and then reread it a bunch of times. Um, for ease of, you know, just for a million reasons, for quality of writing, quality of ideas, are they really non obvious? Uh, grammatical errors, fact check, I will make sure that I, every time I'm making an assertion that, or I give a quote or something, I, I go and double check it on Google to make sure that it's not inaccurate. And then usually I'd say a total of four hours of work, my column is done, and uh, email to my editor at AOL or US News or Mensa, the three places I'm currently uh, writing. Uh, regularly, uh, and that's it. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. It's, it's not everybody's way to write. So I'm not saying it's the best way to write, but it is the way I write. Okay, take care.